so I don't get out to the movies much anymore. I've got a lot of kids, and uh, getting to the theater, it's got to be something special. And I'm a big fan of the original, and uh, I saw this last night, and uh, I don't have very many nice things to say. Let me preface this by saying I'm not against studios uh, doing remakes. I'm rooting for a Tom Holland fronted Back to the Future film any day now. Like, I know that's not going to happen, but I would be fully in support of it. So I don't hate something just because it's a remake. But I should have known better when we got to the movie theater and the usher is taking us to our seats and we're about to place our order for food and we pretty quickly figured out why. This movie was absolute trash. Now, I'm going to do this review. <laughs> I'm going to do this review and if you don't want any spoilers, then skip this video because I'm going to talk about this movie in detail. I'll start with Eric Draven's haircut. Of all the tests that they did for this uh, for this character, and Bill Skarsgård had to have went through makeup and, and wardrobe tests and everything else. That haircut is the one that they chose for this movie. I've seen better haircuts on children who cut their own hair. It was absolutely distracting. Uh, I just... <laughs> Best should have been your first clue when you watch the trailer. The, the movie is no better than the trailer would indicate that it is. And that brings me to the next point. When you watch a movie with two characters, especially a vengeance story, which are among my favorites, you have to be emotionally invested in the characters that you're watching. You have to want to see character A want to avenge character B. The origin story of Eric and Shelley in this movie was absolutely laughable. They take two characters that you would walk across the street to avoid in real life and make them the focal point of your revenge story. So this story starts with Eric and Shelley meeting in a prison rehab facility, some over-the-top co-ed prison rehab facility. They meet, immediately escape, spend a few days getting high and doing the nasty, and all of a sudden, their love has formed so strong that when they're both murdered, Eric comes back to want to avenge her and to pull her out of purgatory. You're telling me that's the story you're going to go with. I've never read the source material. I don't know anything about the graphic novel, just the first movie. But you could have did a frame-for-frame -frame remake of the first movie, and it would have been perfect. As long as, you, as, long as your, your cast brings you through, you didn't have to do anything else. But you try to you try to do pull some other garbage from the source material, and this is what you come up with: two drug addicts meet and escape a <laughs> two drug addicts meet and escape a prison rehab facility. Go on a few days bender, <laughs> do the nasty, and the love is so strong that you want to avenge her murder and pull her out of purgatory. <laughs> I wish I was making this up. The movie is so mundane that it's hard to get invested with any of the characters. Um, there are no recognizable faces in this movie outside of Bill Skarsgård. Now, I'm not gonna fault him. I know for a fact that dude can act his ass off. He is an excellent actor. All you need to do is go on YouTube and look up his test screenings for Pennywise. That dude is a fantastic actor. In this, he had one moment in the movie where I was like, oh shit, that was, that was nice. The rest of the movie, it was just trash. His character, uh, everything about his character, the way he talked, the way he carried himself, it was just forgettable. And that brings me to the lack of face paint. Um, the, the, the Crow character to me is synonymous with the face paint. There is no face paint in this movie. He puts on the, 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 black, white, the, the black wash around his eyes and his mouth a little bit at the very, very end of the movie, but he walks around as he did when he was alive uh, for the majority of the movie. Um, why would you take that character that's that symbolic and just, I'm not going to do any face paint this time around. We're just going to do our own thing. It's complete trash. It was absolutely abysmal. Next point, I wasn't a big fan of the purgatory angle. Uh, in the original, you know, Eric and Shelly are murdered. Eric wakes up from the grave, goes on a vengeance streak, and then returns to the grave. And this one, they're both murdered. Eric wakes up in purgatory. He gets killed. He goes back to purgatory. He comes back again. It's, I don't know what they were thinking. Just honestly, I don't know what they were thinking. Again, I don't have any frame of reference other than the original movie. Uh, I don't know what the source material says or anything like that, but it was, I just shake my head. I shake my head. And last but not least, remember scroll if you don't want to know how it ends. Eric is successful with bringing Shelly back from purgatory. She comes back to life to find him dead. And that's just the most unsatisfying shit that I can imagine. It's bad enough in the original that 
uh, Eric and Shelly are both murdered and Eric returns to the grave after he finishes his tasks. But in this one, Eric successfully pulls Shelly out of purgatory on her way to hell and she wakes up to find him dead. And that movie ends. <laughs> it's like, who wrote this shit? One final thing about her, his love for her, okay? So Eric is told that his love has to remain pure in order to embark on his journey, right? Halfway through the movie, Eric finds out that Shelly, while under someone else's influence, kills someone and he doubts his love for her. So he, he doesn't heal anymore. And so now he has to go back to purgatory. And so he has a moment where he doubts his love for her, but then immediately follows it up with, well, I'll just give you my soul for her. So you're going to go to hell for her after you doubted your love for her because you found out she killed someone. And it's just this. I don't know what happened with this, but I can't, I have, there are no words to explain how disappointed I am with this movie. It was absolute trash and I should have known better. I should have known better as soon as I saw the trailer, but The Crow was in my top 10 all time and I, I had to give it a shot. It may be a bit unfair to compare this to the original when they were probably going more off the source material that the original was based off of, but when you have an iconic movie that you're remaking, it's going to get comparisons to the original. Um, even if you take away comparing it to the original, this movie was terrible. It was just terrible. I don't know what else to say. Give it a shot when it comes to Netflix or inevitable streaming in two weeks because it's not going to make any money. Um, we literally were the only people in the theater. And it, it, that, it is what it is. The, the, the new Crow movie is absolute trash. This movie is so bad that it makes those really bad directed DVD sequels back in the day to the original look like Masterpiece Theater. So go watch one of those instead.